But would you give a hero welcome, a hero welcome to our sergeant today. Jeff, come on, sir. We are delighted you're here. Thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, as you said, I, I joined the Army uh, December of 99. Um, still senior in high school. Didn't know what I was going to do with my life. Didn't really want to go to college either, so I joined the Army. Um, but yeah, as he said, I had no idea what was to come. Had no idea that I was going to make a career, well, try to make a career out of it. Um, in, in December, or, or last part of 2002, after 9-11, we found out, yeah, we're, we're about to go over there, um, for, for the, basically the shock and awe of, of the war. We were going to be the initial push. And, um, I was 20 and getting ready to go overseas. Um, so needle, needless to say, I was kind of forced into growing up real quick. Um, I was my commander's gunner, uh, so it was my job to keep my commander safe and my convoy safe. And I made it home, so I must have been good at my job. Um, then came home probably November of 2003 and was having a really tough time adjusting back to, to civilian life, trying to get back used to things. Um, I was in the process of going to college. I started uh, fall or the, the semester of 2002 at Florida Christian College and was studying to become a youth minister of all things. Um, after I came back, I just, I didn't, I didn't have the heart for it anymore. I, Mentally, I wasn't prepared to to do that. I I wasn't right um, because it it changes you whether or not you act like it, whether or not you say it does, it does. Um, was having a tough time transitioning, so I went back to Iraq in 2004 voluntarily and stayed there for a little while, came home, met, met my wife in um, April of 2004, two weeks after I had gotten home. So that, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> and then we, we started our family together and never really knew what was going to go from there. Went, went back active duty, we moved up to South Carolina, moved however many times since then. and. Um, in 2007, within a week of each other, I got a call that I was being deployed once again. I was a E6 at the time, and um, about a week after that, my wife told me she was pregnant having a baby. It's like, oh, wow, yeah, this, this is going to be great. I was happy about the baby. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, so June of 2012, no, eight, yes. Um, I was slotted to leave on a Friday, so it would have been June 13th. I was supposed to fly out. My middle daughter was born June 12th. <laughs> so I got to at least see her before I left. Landed in, in Kuwait um, on Father's Day 2012. Eight, sorry. I've got 12 stuck on my mind. And um, proceeded to, to take over my job. I was a mechanic and recovery specialist on our convoy. So it was my job when vehicles went down or got blown up to recover them and bring them home. And um, during, during that night, it was August 14th, 2.30 in the morning. I was recovering a vehicle that had gotten into a very horrible accident and we came under attack the I had they started the attack with two RPGs the rocket propelled grenades and two mortar rounds 
The second mortar round is what landed within a foot of me and knocked me unconscious and sent me flying who knows where. I don't, I don't remember it, thankfully. Um, it wasn't until the next day that I realized anything was really even different. I went to get out of my bunk and collapsed because I couldn't walk. So called my medic over there. I was, I was hard-headed. My medic was lower rank than me, so I could tell him what to do. Um, told him to, to wrap my foot, put my boot on, wrap that as tight as he could. The, I wasn't going to the doctor. I, we were just about into Kuwait, so I, I was done. I, I was going there. It was about a week after that that I realized something was really wrong. And then found out they were sending me home. Um, ended up coming home with an inoperable injuries to my to my left leg, um, a ruptured post tibial tendon, and the nerve that fed feeds my foot was completely obliterated or destroyed or whatever. So was retired in uh, 2011 because the Army decided there was nothing more they could do for me. And um, proceeded the long, hard struggle of dealing with going from the prime of my career to being in a wheelchair, being out of the military, not knowing what I was going to do. Met, met Tom and Kathy in um, December of 2012. That's why I have 12 on my mind. and. Um, at the time, we weren't, we weren't making any money. All the money had disappeared. We got paid $344 for the month of December, and our power bill was 360 And Tom and Kathy stepped in in Fairways for Warriors and provided my family with Christmas that year. So at, at their Christmas party, he was like, hey, uh, you should come out and give it a try. I'm sitting there thinking, it's golf. I don't want to go play golf. That, that doesn't sound fun at all. <laughs> I was wrong, though. And it, it wasn't even really about the fun. It was about the camaraderie, being around other guys that were going through the same thing, getting out of my house, getting just being in a different surrounding that, than what you're used to. And it's, it's completely turned my life around. I'm still a jerk at home, but not near as much of a jerk as I was. Um, we don't yell as much at home. We're, we're a much happier family, not just me, but a family all together. And the Fairways for Warriors has really been there for me through my struggles with my injury, getting the pain getting worse and all that. And Tom's been there 100% of the way. And most people will say, oh, well, good luck getting amputated. And that it's, it's kind of weird to say, yeah, you're going to go get your leg chopped off. Good luck. I mean, it's, it's not something you normally hear. But it was something that we had really prayed about for a long time, and we felt that was the right move to be able to move on with our lives is the for my leg to be amputated so that I can be up and walking. My leg came off August 1st of this year. Two weeks later, I was walking. And exactly. Thank you. And then on October 4th, <laughs> On our 10th anniversary, I was able to walk my wife down the aisle. And dance. <laughs> and then um, last Friday, played 18 holes of golf. I went from being in a wheelchair 98% of the time to less than 10% maybe. I don't take it with me in public anymore. I, it, it's truly been a life-changing decision. The, 
the leg being taken off was nowhere near inhibiting me from living my life. I've been able to hold both my kids at the same time, my nine-year-old and my six-year-old, which I hadn't been able to pick them up in over six years. I've been able to ride bikes now, play golf again, standing and not be in excruciating pain. So what, what Fairways for Warriors provides for, for all of us isn't just, oh, here's, here's golf clubs, here's beer, go out and have fun. It's, it's nowhere near that like most people consider golf to be. It's being out there with other guys that know what you've been through, know when you say something you're not going to offend somebody. It's, it's just fun. I mean, somebody you meet for the very first time, you can sit there and have a conversation with them. And being military, you can't just go to a random civilian that you run into and have a conversation with them. Because something you say is going to offend them. It, it is. That's just how we are. And every military guy in the, in the audience, you can understand that. Something, something that goes on in here isn't, isn't the same. So Fairways for Warriors has really helped me turn my life around and make it a hundred times better than what it was. And don't want it any other way.